What I discovered in, in leading the design of the $100 laptop or the XO laptop or the one laptop per child laptop, if you develop stuff for the poorest people in the world, the, the gadgets won't be gadgets anymore. I think of gadgets as disposable things. They'll be long-lasting, reliable things that are robust, repairable, and uh, low power. I didn't think that we could be green. I was told early on by major manufacturers that that would cost $30 more, and I thought, oh, $30, um, we're not going to do it. We're not going to be green. We can't afford it, and we'll just try to do the right thing all the, along the line. And as a result, by trying to do the right thing and by designing for the poorest people in the world, we've made the greenest laptop that's ever been made. And that's not just the color. So green, this is a green conference. So how green is the XO? Well, this is half the size and weight, a third the part count. It's repairable. Um, there's you know, none of the toxic materials, including no mercury. There's an LED backlight, a replaceable LED backlight. When's the last time you've seen a replaceable backlight or even a replaceable light bar on a display? Display makers don't want to do that because they want to sell you a new display, not a $1 backlight. Well, ours is two screws and you can just replace the strip of LEDs if it burns out. But I've tested it, it should last five years, even in Libya, which actually is the hottest place on earth. This is recyclable, it's reusable, we're recycling it. The, the batteries also, they, they talk about batteries, but our batteries with processing decompose into fertilizer and they last four times the normal lifetime of a battery, 2,000 charge recharge cycles. If we compare a typical desktop with a typical green laptop in the XO, the XO is, is um, you know, better as far as environmental impact. And, and we got the EP Gold Award, but we're working with them to try to make things even tougher. But the most interesting design feature of this laptop is the low power consumption. And I looked at some data, and the average, I average 80, 80 watts and 20 watts in, in one definition of idle. There are many definitions of idle. We're one watt idle. So if everybody replaced their laptop, if you look, there's uh, 230 million PCs deployed in the world right now. We'd save 85 billion kilowatt hours. And even at 10 cents a kilowatt hour, that's enough just money, not even the carbon you know, impact or the transportation cost or all of that. That's enough just to buy these for 50 million children in the world. So if you look at it, that's the current laptop and desktop power consumption worldwide. And if everybody switched to this architecture, we could massively lower it. And this is just one example of what you could do with laptops. If you think about it, you could do this with other things too. If you just sort of rethink what, what you're doing in a big way. Try stringing cables up and down the Peruvian Andes to bring, you know, electricity or even the gas guzzling generators that spew the toxic fumes. For $25 a kid, they get a solar panel and a hand crank. So they use the solar panel during the day at the school to charge their laptop and the hand crank on the occasions when it rains or at night when they need just a little bit of juice because you don't want to hand crank the thing all the time. That lasts for, you know, 10 years. $25, $2.5 a year for clean, renewable energy. It's the cheapest way to do it. We also have, we're working on a cassette you attach to a bicycle to, uh, you know, make it into an exercise bike and harness that so a kid in the school can, can um, bulk charge a group of batteries. I'm showing a, what we call a multi-battery charger that uses a car battery to, to charge a bunch of the batteries, you know, back here. In India, where we're doing a, a pilot right now, they don't have a lot of bicycles. In fact, there were none in the region where we were doing it, near outside of Mumbai, in a really poor area. But they have a lot of cows. So, you know, we thought, okay. Um, actually, uh, an intern named Arjun um, Sawal decided to uh, take a thing out of a Fiat and make it into a rotor and have the cows walk around it. And so that's how they're powering the laptops in the school. Usually screen design takes 20 years and the patents expire. So the trick is using the manufacturing infrastructure that exists with no material changes, no process changes, but rethink the conceptual design of it. So I used a transflective process and made a sunlight readable high resolution screen that's also color in a dark room and um, it's extremely low power and low cost. And the key thing about the screen isn't really the screen. 
It's what it enables in the architecture. The screen stays on when the rest of the motherboard can be turned off momentarily. Why does that matter? Half of the children in the world don't have electricity at home, don't have electricity at school. The average power consumption of a laptop is 30 to 40 watts. We worked with Free Play and some other organizations to really optimize what kind of input a child could do with their arms, with their legs. Um, you know, it's, it's 5 to 10 watts, and we're up closer to 10 watts. But a 30-watt laptop means, you know, you crank for a minute and you get, you know, 20 seconds of charge. <laughs> that, that's not going to work. We want to crank for a minute and get 10 minutes of charge. So more important than this being a $100 or $180 laptop, this is a two-watt laptop. 